wonderful psalm 103 verses 1 to 5 welcome to this week's edition of the scots kirk praise the lord we are looking to the lord to renew the scots kirk so that those who are the faithful remnant and all those who love the scots kirk either at home or all over the world We'll see the fire burn brightly again. The burning bush, the emblem of the Scots Kirk. Nick tamen consume batur, and yet it was not consumed. Let it burn bright in the great revival of the end times, so that many, many, many thousands will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, just like in the days of old of the Scots Kirk, just like in the days of the great missionaries, like David Livingston and Mary Slessor. Let it be. Let's pray now as we pray in these words. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Thou... And thou alone hast created the earth and everything and everybody that is in it and indeed the whole universe. Father God, we give thee all the praise and all the glory now. And remembering that in thy presence is fullness of joy. Father God, we ask in the name of thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thou wilt remember now the Scots Kirk, now sunk in the lowest depths of hypocrisy and apostasy. 
and secrecy. That thou wilt, Father God, uproot the dead wood, the branches that bear not fruit, and thou, and thou alone will build, as thou saidst to thy son Jesus Christ, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And Lord, we give you all the preeminence now, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, at this service of the Scots Kirk. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a wonderful hymn by St. Columba. And I dearly love this hymn. As we begin this service, let's rededicate ourselves to the Lord. This is like a creed. Christ is the world's redeemer. Let's sing it with all our hearts. And let's remember the words. Christ is the world's redeemer. Christ is the world's redeemer, the lover of the pure, the fount of heavenly wisdom, our trust and hope secure. The Christ has our hearts surrounded with clouds of martyrs bright who wave their palms in triumph and fire us for the fight. Christ the Lord on cross ascended to save a world undone and Suffering for the sinful, our full redemption won. All glory to the Father, the unbegotten one. All honor be to Jesus, his soul begotten Son. And to the Holy Spirit, the perfect Trinity, let all the worlds give answer, amen, so let it be. Oh, wonderful hymn. I, I love to hear that. Because we need to establish the truth of the word, the truth of the Trinity, the truth of the Spirit, and the Spirit and the Word to be one. And that is what will bring revival in these last days. The former and the latter reign together. The Spirit, the true Spirit of God, and the true Word of God, the unadulterated Word of God together. And the fire of revival will burn bright. Let me tell you, dear, dear brothers and sisters, viewers and listeners of the Scots Kirk, that last week we were talking about the covenant names of God and indeed the meaning of covenant. We talked about the covenant that God makes with his people and what it really means because it's conditional. We look to the wonderful example of Abraham and of the first covenant name of God in Genesis when God spoke to Abraham and Abraham recognized God as Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. And now God himself provided a sacrifice. Because Abraham was willing to go all the way with God in obedience. We know already that Abraham said, 
that he counted it all as faith, that by faith and patience he achieved the promise, and therefore he's called faithful Abraham. But to actually go all the way up to Mount Moriah in Jerusalem nowadays, and sacrifice, be willing to sacrifice his only true son of promise, as opposed to the son of the bondwoman, the son of promise, Isaac. He was at the point of sacrificing his own son. And the Lord said to him, because Abraham's had such faith, he said to Isaac, the Lord will provide a sacrifice. And the sacrifice was a ram caught in the thicket, do you remember? And he said, God said, I now see that you are not willing to disobey me in anything. You're even not withholding your only son. And through that amazing covenant, God then sent his only son, his only begotten son, I should say, Christ Jesus our Lord, to be sacrificed as a lamb without spot or blemish. Hallelujah. And that was the first covenant name of God. And we also remember the wonderful people, the covenanters, the glorious saints of God in the 17th century in particular, who were willing to make a covenant with God in their own blood, writing their names in their own blood, willing to suffer and bleed and die for the truth, for the word of God. But this week, we'll be looking at another wonderful covenant name of God. And there are clues to it in the first two, uh, the Psalm 103 that we sang, which so famously says, All thine iniquities who doth most graciously forgive, who thy diseases all and pains doth heal and thee relieve. And the wonderful abundance of good things the Lord hath given us, including healing. And in the same way, we look to that wonderful, wonderful, Christ is the world's redeemer. But before we study the scripture and look at this covenant name of God, let's just Sing this really wonderful mission hymn. I will sing the wondrous story because this is what he's given us as our great commission to preach the gospel to every creature, Mark 16. And then the end will come. This is what he commands us to do. So let's commit ourselves to this as well. This is a wonderful hymn. story of the Christ who died for me, how he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory. See. I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. Through his loving arms around me, drew me back into his way. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the cross. Who died for me? Sing it with the saints in glory, gathered round the crystal sea. I was bruised, but Jesus healed me. Faint was I from many a fall. Sight was gone, and fears possessed me, but He freed. Be from them all. Yes, I'll 
Yes, I'll sing a wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. Days of darkness still come over me, sorrow's path I often tread, but the Savior still is with me, by his hand I'm safely led. Yes, I'll sing a wondrous story of the Christ who died for me, sing it at my feet then he'll bear me safely over where the loved ones I shall meet yes I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me sing it with the saints in glory gathered by to see. Isn't it a lovely old hymn? It's a real mission hall hymn. And it just takes you back to the days when there were so many people of faith, when things seemed so much simpler and people were willing to give their all, as indeed they are in so many parts of the world for Jesus Christ. And there's a time coming Dear brothers and sisters, viewers and listeners, very shortly, when there will be a great harvest of souls on the earth, for things will be so difficult and there will be so much trouble. You can see it coming already in the last two years in particular. So much fear and distress and men's hearts failing them for fear as is predicted in the word of God. That there will come a time when people will ask, they will come on, the, uh, on board the arcs, the spiritual arcs that are being built in the world. It's coming. It's coming. We need to come on board before it's too late. We need to tell other people to come on board. We need to have this urgency, this imminency. And oh, there's so much. As it said in that hymn, I was bruised. I was faint from many a fall. Sight was gone and fears possessed me, but he freed me from them all. What a glorious thought. And it's so important at these times when all the systems round about us are failing and staggered everything, everything from the political systems of the world, the governments of the world, the health service here, health service, social service, your education system, anything you care to mention, transport, <laughs> railways, ferries and ships, everything is failing. The, the flights, even the airports and, and, and the systems, of the flying paths over the world, everything's changing. And everything's failing. So we must, must look to him, our rock. And the churches, I hasten to add, which do not preach the word of God, but only copy the world. And you know who you are. They're falling away. These are the churches where buildings are being sold, where congregations are leaving and dwindling. That are being closed down, that are being sold off for whatever purpose, whether it be cafes or restaurants or mosques or whether they just lie empty. They're being sold off, they're dying. We need to come back to the word and to recognize that we are the, possibly the very last generation 
before the coming of the rapture when Jesus comes to take his saints in the air. And we don't lie back and wait for that, but we preach the gospel in season and out of season. And we stand firm and we, where necessary, rebuke as well as edify and comfort. So here's the covenant name of God, part two, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha means the God who heals. And we read about this wonderful healing covenant in Exodus chapter 15, verses 22 to 27. Starting at verse 22 then. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree which he had cast into the waters. The waters were made sweet when he had cast them in, it in. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them and said, If, you see, every covenant with God always is two-way covenant and begins with if. It's what we call a conditional promise or covenant. He said, If. Thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and wilt give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord. I am, that is forever. Uh, when he says, I am that I am. I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's Jehovah Rapha. And they came to Elam, where were 12 wells of water and three score and 10 palm trees. And they encamped there by the waters. Amen. Now this is a type as well. Of things to come. That's the first thing to say. That this is not the one and only time that the tree is meant mentioned for healing. This is a, a foretaste of things to come. In Ezekiel, we read about these trees for the healing. And also in the great book of Revelation, chapter 22, the very Last chapter. Please turn to Revelation 22 with me. This is a wonderful picture. It's also, as I've said in the great prophet Ezekiel, that in one of the verses in Ezekiel, chapters in Ezekiel, this here is, of course, as we know, the beloved apostle John speaking, saying this, and he showed me a pure river, of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Amen. So we have this amazing picture of the leaves for the healing of the nations, of the Wonderful place where the river of life comes from the throne of God. River of life. 
where all these tree, where this wonderful tree that reeled fruit for the healing of the nations. And this is similar. This is a forerunner of it here, where this tree is cast into the waters in Exodus 15. The waters were made sweet. And where God himself promises healing, makes a healing covenant with the nation of Israel on condition that they not only hearken to the voice of the Lord, hear, listen, hearken, pay attention to the voice of the Lord, but also do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep them. Then he will put none of the diseases upon us. It's still forever, this covenant. Because he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. This is just after, this happened just after the great miracle of the crossing of the Red Sea. It happened after the Egyptians. We were told the Egyptians which thou seest today, thou see no more forever. The evil and this Egyptian system was and is a system of slavery, of death. Did you know the Egyptians were preoccupied, obsessed with death? That for about 2,000 years, at least, the Egyptians built statues of their pharaohs and their the pharaoh's wives and whoever else. And they always looked exactly the same because all they thought about was death. They were the ones who had built enormous tombs. In fact, the people of Israel who were enslaved by the Egyptians and whom Moses, led by the Lord himself, led out of, it's out of Egypt by miraculous signs and wonders. They were enslaved to build dead temples and tombs for the dead pharaohs. It was full of death, the Egyptian system, and it still is now. You can see in many of the church graveyards in Scotland, including Kirkinner, which is not far away from here, the village of Kirkinner, where the church is sadly closed and up for sale, and the manse. You just need to look in that graveyard and you see these obelisks, which are, just in case you didn't know, fertility symbols of the Egyptians. What are fertility symbols of Egypt doing in a Christian graveyard, you may ask? What concord has Christ with Baal? What concord has the church, the, the people of God, with Freemasonry? Because they worship another god or other gods. That's easily provable, by the way. Easily provable. And yet, despite the miracles, signs and wonders that the Lord showed the Israelites at the crossing of the Red Sea, here they are, the first difficulty they have of not having any water and they're moaning and murmuring against Moses. And the Lord makes this great covenant with them heals the waters, and also says, I am the Lord that healeth thee, I will keep all these diseases from you. Did the Israelites rejoice? Well, for a little while. And then in the next chapter, they're mourning again about not having food. They're full of doubt and unbelief, and because of that, their carcasses fell in the wilderness. Just as people's carcasses have been filled have been falling in the wilderness of backsliding and apostate so-called Christianity in these last few years. This is a time to be full of faith and patience to achieve the promise. This is a time to keep our covenant with God because Jesus himself said, when he took the bread and the wine over the, pa or the Passover meal, he said, this is the Passover, he said. He said, this is my blood 
That is actually what he was saying, basically, that the blood of the Lamb of God was about to be shed. That's what he was saying. That is a new covenant in my blood, he said. He said, I'm not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So the new covenant of Christ Jesus himself shedding his blood for the sins of the world, conquering death and hell. That is a new covenant. And everything that we read here in this chapter is also in the new covenant and is to be seen even in the book of Revelation. I am the Lord that healeth me, he said. Turn to Isaiah 53, please. And you will see how the covenant is to be fulfilled. The prophet Isaiah many times prophesied the coming of the Lord to the earth. And this is also concerning the healing covenant Chapter 53 says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. So few people understand this. But this was written into the statement of faith of Elam. We read about Elam, where, as we've just read about, Elam, where there were 12 wells of water and three score and ter- 10 palm trees. And the great apostle George Jeffreys, modern apostle, had a vision from God to found this movement. I don't like to call it a denomination, but a Pentecostal movement called Elam. He founded that, and he understood about the healing covenant that God made with his people that is fulfilled through Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, and that with his stripes we were healed. See, Isaiah talks about it a lot in the past tense that he was wounded, even though it hadn't happened and wasn't going to happen for hundreds of years. He was healed. He was bruised, I should say. The chastisements of our peace were upon him. And he is our healer. We just have to appropriate Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. Because when we get saved and born again, our spirits are already healed. But our soul and our bodies, we can also walk in divine health. Amen and amen. So let's appropriate this covenant as we sing our last hymn. When peace like a river attendeth my way. Beautiful hymn. When peace like a river a 
the clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. things are so soon coming. We're not <laughs> worried about the grave. The sky is our goal. And the Lord is coming soon. Coming soon. We need to look up and watch and pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me for this wonderful time that we've shared with the Lord. In the Scots Kirk. And now, as I sing, first of all, I sing the doxology, the Hebrew blessing, the triple amen, and then look out for that wonderful song, which is really like a prayer, set Scotland now on fire. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. And give thee peace. Amen. 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 
that shit. Let Scotland be now on fire in the spirit.